What is a YouTube? It's Horror Master, and I'm back with yet another video. So last video I did, I did on my f top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. Which, if you have not seen that video, I already put it down in the description below or pin it somewhere up in here. I'm still trying to figure out this whole YouTube shit, so game cut me a break off. Okay, so um, I was thinking of ideas of whether eight videos to do, and then thanks to my good old buddy Scott, Mr. Scott Reacts, who you all should check his. YouTube channel, I'll have a link in there, put it somewhere here as well. So I was talking to him and he suggested a couple of ideas and one of the ideas that he brought up to me was underrated horror movies, which that got, got my brain to think and I actually came up with a list. So an underrated movie is a movie that when it came out, it wasn't really as appreciated at the time, but later on either got a cult following or never got the appraisal that I should have gotten. And some of these um, movies that I have here are great movies that not a lot of I don't hear a lot of people talk about in the horror scene, the horror circle, which this movies, these movies should get more respect where respect is due. But another, but I have some couple of honorable mentions. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, six honorable mentions. Uh, the first one, which. Um, it's not really un uh, underrated, but at the at the time it was when it first came out, and that is Trick or Treat. Of course, you all know Sam, and of course, the little the story behind Trick or Treat, having this kind of an anthology movie where it takes place on Halloween, had these different kind of stories from Sam to, of course, um, uh, the ladies who turn who are actually werewolves and. Um, you know, it's kind of the mythos behind behind the Halloween, behind the origins of Halloween and all that, which has become a cult classic. And um, we're I don't know if we're gonna get part two. There's been rumors about giving us a part two or a ring or some sort. But um, if that ever happens, I would really <clears throat> sorry about that. I would really like to see how they will follow up because I think this movie came out in the early two thousands, so it's been close to almost fifteen years since. You know, we should have gotten part two, but anyways. Um, the next honorable mention I have, and I actually saw this movie in theaters when it came out. And that the movie is As Above, So Below. Now, when I first saw this movie, I I loved it because it's kind of like a found footage movie, sort of, about these um, uh, archaeologists trying to go into the cabins, in the old caverns of, of, of France, and... Finding an item for them to find and instead of going there, they're actually going, you know, to the depths of hell. They're actually going through the nine circles of hell. And every time they go through each level, the characters all kind of have their sins revealed to them, which is really, really shocking. And um, especially one scene where I don't remember one of the characters, um, his car or I guess his brother or some of religion was in a car accident. And the car is burning and the guy tries to, you know, go to the car and trying to um, get the person out. But I guess it backfires. And it's a weird movie that the more you see it, the more you love you love it. Uh, my next honorable mention is the movie Wreck. Now, for a lot of people who might know this this movie, if you all seen the, the, the movie Quarantine, this is the original a movie that inspired the movie Quarantine. This is a um, Spanish movie in Midtown in Spain, and um, it talks about how uh, how this this camera crew is recording a group of firefighters, and then they get a call from um from some apartments, and they're going inside, and apparently there's this lady who got injured, and this you know she's really in bad condition to the point that you know they had to bring in the, like, the ambulance and all that, and this lady begins to Twitch or something and bites one of the crew members and then of course it's kind of like a zombie-esque movie and then once you get bitten by somebody the of course turn to zombies so on and so forth and of course we let her find out that they weren't either actually zombies they're like demon possessions from somewhere but you you gotta see this movie I mean, if you love quarantine you're gonna love the original version of work and like I said being a being 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 a Mexican American, and of course having a a Spanish movie, even though they're not really it's in like things somewhere in Spain, it really, you know I I I I had to love it for that reason. 
Um, next up, I kind of another found footage movie. This is kind of hinting to the um, uh, what's the name of the, that um, TV show? Um, I'm trying to remember now. I'll remember later. But the movie I'm talking about is Grave Encounters. Now, Grave Encounters and like another found movie about how the some group of ghost detectives go into different locations and trying to find ghost sightings. And in one of the occasions, they go into this haunted hospital somewhere in, I want to say Connecticut, if I remember correctly. And they obviously want to investigate and see any ghost sightings. And they know the the people behind the 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 crew in the movie. They know that some of this is fake, you no know, ghosts don't exist and all that. But they kept it off and doing it to the point that once they're inside the hospital, they never escape. Because they they never escape the hospital. They, they they stuck there forever. It never becomes sunset. Like the sun never doesn't shine anymore. Quoting of fish and trees. But the things that go inside the hospital. And the sightings. And the scares. And that really fucked. That really fucked up scene. Which I'll probably put somewhere there. If I remember or something. But. That visual, I mean, it's... Ugh, again. Another honorable mention is The Taking of Deborah Logan. Another found footage movie. This time, more into the exorcism side of things. About how this um, elderly lady named Deborah Logan begins to, ha- begins to have signs of early dementia. And, of course, it goes through all the, the, the things of dementia. You know, sick people and all that. But the camera crew begins to notice something particularly odd about this person to the point that they actually thought that she's actually been possessed to and they later found out that she was possessed by a demon and it's a weird movie that again if you like found footage movies like me you'll die like it which is another maybe video that I'll probably do somewhere down the road of my five, top 10 favorite found footage movies because I really dig those um and the last one which I remember I don't I think I saw this also when it came out and that is the movie Oculus. Now Oculus is one of those movies that I like I said I remember going to the theater and watching it and I loved it. I mean it's a kind of to the point that Stephen King himself said this is a very scary movie and you know when one of the masters of horror says this is very really scary, you know it gets the it gets you thinking maybe it is a, a good movie. So it's about this Brothers that are trying to find a mirror, and, ap- and apparently the mirror has been passed down throughout so many generations that this mirror makes you look things and makes people possess, makes you kill people to the point. I mean, kill. I mean, it's a haunted mirror, just to be more specific. But um, if you have not seen this movie, I seriously recommend y'all to watch it. It's a really, really, really good movie. But now, up to my top ten. Underrated horror movies. Uh, the first one, again, I'm, I kind of a found footage movie, and that is the movie Creep. So this movie came out in 2014, and it's about this guy who is going through the internet trying to, I guess, um, trying to find more stuff to do with f- 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 filmography, and he finds an email about this guy who is willing to pay X amount of money for just for you to hang out with him and all that, and I guess right. I guess record his obituary if he ever dies and all that. As the movie goes on, it looks turns out that this guy is, as the movie says, a creep, and begins to do weird things like wearing a fucking um, wolf mask just to for the camera to see, and then uh, doesn't want the guy to go, wants him to keep it around twenty four seven, almost to the point of hostage level. And um, of course, unfortunately, the creep, the the, the main, uh, not the main guy, but uh, the other person kills the cameraman, which talk about a jump scare. And of course, this later got, got a, it's a, a second part creep too, which it's another movie that I do recommend you to watch. I think both movies are good, but I think the first one is the one that I usually go back to most. At number nine, we have... The Poughkeepsie Tapes. So the Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie Tapes is a 
Another found footage movie kind of documentary-esque movie about this serial killer who does a lot of killings in the Poughkeepsie area. That to the point that this guy begins to record his own killings, how he kills them, how he to some point rapes women, how he begins to um, dispatch of bodies. He did that for his own pleasure. And like I said, it's kind of like a documentary-esque movie that you see a lot of detectives, police, a lot of um, professors trying to analyze all the things that he did and making it into this documentary, which I actually honestly thought it was an actual movie, something that really happened. I later found out that it was actually fake. But it, they made it so real that it makes me think that maybe there is somebody out there in the world who really is fucked up like this, which I hope there isn't. At number eight, bip, we have Hangman. Another found footage movie. <laughs> At this point, mostly some of them are going to be found footage, but I suppose this is probably the last found footage movie I have on my list. Like I said, I'll probably do another separate video on found footage horror movies. But this one is a bit of a weird one. I, rem I think I remember going to with one of my cousins in um, in Nuevo Laredo, Mex in Mexico. And they were watching this movie and, you know, me being the horror guy, I was like, I was honestly intrigued because it's about this guy who is kind of homeless and just stalks a family. They He lets the family go on vacation or do whatever they're going to do for a couple of days. While they're doing that, this guy goes inside their house, puts on cameras and kind of lives in the basement and he kind of begins to... Live in, live in the house with the family and starts to stalk them, starts to watch them go to sleep and watch them do all crazy stuff. And it, there's even one scene where the guy is watching the couple having sex and he's just, which, oh, that's just disgusting. But the ending, I mean, I'm, the, there's even a scene where the guy cries as he's, going through the family photos and I'm guessing this guy had a really hard time with his family but <clears throat> the psychological thing be behind this guy's reasons for being a killer are so profound so unorthodox that I don't even I want to know more but unfortunately we didn't get more I want more of this at number seven we have Pontypool this movie came out in 20 2008 and it's a, a spin-off kind of to the zombie genre, but in a twist to the in a twist. So it's about this radio host who of course is of course in the radio and then he's get this message around that how a uh, certain virus is transmitting throughout the 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 area and apparently it's being transmitted from the English language, which is kind of weird. I get it and whoever is outside or does a bit begins to turn into this like mindless zombies not really zombies where they're starting eating flesh but just just mindless zombies you know and it's a weird movie that you should all watch because it's a like I said it's kind of a um, spin off to a zombie movie but really not really be a zombie movie more been of a uh, I don't know what to describe it but it's a great movie to watch at number six, and this one I do have it on CD, The Appeared or in Spanish, Los Aparecidos. So this movie came out in 20, 2007 by IFC Films, which I love IFC Films. They have some of the best horror movies they've ever done in the world, but that's beside the point. So this, this takes place around Argentina in 2001 about how this, uh, how this a brother and sister go visit their dying father and they later find out that they find his car and then go a rip to to the Argentinian scene trying to go to uh one of their brother's birthplace birthplace and as they go on they find this diary of things that happened in the eighties and um some kind of like the Nazis sorta kind of story but in but what happened in Argentina in the eighties about executions and Missing people and the ending is kind of a uh, something unique because as the story goes on, whatever's happening in the diary, which happened like 20, 30 years ago, 
the brothers are living what's happening in the diary from you know be, from people being kidnapped to of course the writer writing what he's doing to the peop to his victims the brothers are actually seeing and feeling what the diary is portraying and it really 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 I thought it was a unique horror movie not really a horror movie because well it is a horror movie but I mean to have an ending that's so beautiful then sad because the ending kind of takes place the exact moment that the Twin Towers happened in the United States and as the brothers go on they start to run and they start seeing like so many people with white coats and it starts to rain it's kind of like almost like the sixth sense but without the whole six sex thing six sense thing it's sad but beautiful but it's a really movie to watch at number five now we're to the top five and this one did get a lot of shit at the time for it was when it was released but i loved it because it, it's i'll mention it. the movie is maximum overdrive now to have stephen king the man who gave us Carrie, It, Christine, Kyujo, so on and so forth. And you have ACDC, my favorite band of all time, in a movie. I mean, not really ACDC, but the soundtrack to the soundtrack of some of the ACDC's best songs from Who Made Who, which was an original song. It was Bells, Back in Black. I mean, the whole story is about how this fog... Green fog circles the earth and machines start to come up to life and start terrorizing humans from lawnmowers to cars to trucks to a fucking car with a gun trying to, you know, save humans to fuel our tanks or now you get fucking shot. I mean, it's cheesy yet good, funny. Again, it got a lot of shit back in, want to say, 86, 87, but I loved it. And like I said, ACDC being one of my favorite bands of all time, of course I was going to love it instantly to the point that the Who Made Who album, it has three original songs and the rest are just tracks from the album. So technically it is and isn't an ACDC album, but you know, I really love that album. At number four, we have 1408. Speaking of Stephen King, now this movie did get a lot of shit for being not really a true Stephen King movie, which that's bullshit. Stephen King movies, I mean, talk about the Shawshank Redemption, that ain't a horror movie and it's an awesome movie. But 1408 is a movie that, you know, it gets you gets thinking that there are people out there who go to different places just to see um, hauntings and trying to actually verify they're actually real. And this guy goes into a hotel and of course wants to room for two May with where there's a lot of people about a lot of ghost sightings, a lot of weird shit to the point that whoever enters that room, they don't come back. They either disappear or they die. And again, it's another little twist that I like about horror because horror is subjective. And, you know, it's all about what's inside the the mind, inside the body, and sometimes even outside the body. Kind of like how John Carpenter has said so many times, there are two kinds of evil. The evil within us, and the evil outside in the woods, outside of the cabins. But it's, an, it's a movie that I really should get more recognition, and like I said, it, it's an awesome movie. Number three, and this one, this one's one of the movies that... I remember watching it as a kid and I always wanted to know what the name of the movie was. I never for the longest time never knew what it was until like I turned maybe 18, that I, maybe 18, 16 years old. And I finally thought, what, managed to see it again and I remember why I loved it so much and that is The Others. The Others is a 2001 movie that at the time it was a... To me, at the time, it was a revolutionary movie because next to The Sixth Sense, the ending was so shocking. But a lot of people didn't see it that way. They thought since they saw The Sixth Sense, it was a kind of a, uh, a rip-off of that. But if you haven't seen the others, I seriously recommend you all to watch it. It's an awesome, awesome, not even horror. It's a, it's a more of a thriller movie, more of a ghost story, ghost movie. But, I mean, it's an awesome movie. I mean, the story, the actors, everything about it is great. Number two, 
I mentioned in my previous video movies like The Witch, Hereditary, Midsummer, and um, I think that's those kind of movies. I forgot to mention this movie and because it's a movie that I found out through going to some top 10 um, like weird movies back in maybe three, five years ago. And I saw this movie and I thought it was a really, really great movie. And it's another movie from I, I, IFC Films. And that is Antichrist. Now, by the poster that I'm going to put right here, in a minute you're going to be like, this movie must be good. And it is hella good. I mean, I mean, first of all, when you have Willem Dafoe, who is a great actor himself, you automatically caught, it, it caught my attention. So this movie is about this couple who loses their son. And of course, they go through stages of grief. And of course, the mother begins to be be a little bit psycho to the point that of course she wants to you know I guess one of the ways for her to deal with her pain is to have repeatedly sex with Willem Dafoe and uh, they go into the cab into this cabin that they own in a forest and they begin to I guess more mostly began to analyze um, the mother's uh, diagnosis or something because I think she becomes to become more psychotic and there's this scene that where the mother attacks the foe and as he's attacking him like brutally he pull up the pants and starts want to fuck him and she just grabs a brick and boom towards the foe's face but the most uncomfortable scene I've ever seen in my life is where she gets a pair of scissors and goes downhill and cuts her own clitoris which oh god the visual is so disgusting that it, it, it's so weird, so peculiar that it can disturb somebody. But my God, watch this movie. I seriously recommend it. Go watch this movie. And now, we're up to number one. Number one, this movie has... I have never heard anybody mention this movie on never in my life. I've never seen like top 10 movies, like in top 10s. Or I think I've seen maybe like in one top 10 or top 20, but... I think I remember going through a Facebook page and just, you know, wanted to see a different kind of horror movie. And this movie came up to me and it took me a while to finally watch it because I had some other stuff to do or I was busy or school or work, whatever the fuck. But this movie, I seriously consider this probably one of, if not, it's up there as one of the most underrated horror movies of all time. And that is... Possession. Now, Possession is a movie directed by, um, I want to say, French director that came out in 1981. It starts um, new, what was his name? Um, I am forgetting his name. Uh, what's Sam Neill, who will eventually will become, of course, be a part of the Jurassic Park franchise. So the story is about um, Sam Neill's um, character comes back from... Uh, from work or from some sort of trip, comes back to come back, come back, comes back home to his wife and child, and um, the wife he notices that the wife has been unfair to him, and of course when that happens, it can um, tear a man down to the point of breakdown, to the point of actually going insane, which he kind of does, and um, of course he tries to confront the man who stole his wife. And the, the man was like very, it's really understandable that I guess he didn't satisfy her enough. But that's not the point to the point that the wife has a secret that she has a like a, an unknown um, apartment where she's kind of the guard to this creature that I don't know what the hell it is. It's a creature that is demonic something out of this world that we don't know what it is that she kind of kills to feed him and in return it fucks her and I don't know what the hell in the world that is and there is a scene which to me is one of the most haunting scenes I've ever seen in horror about how the the lady goes in the subway and she and the subway is just alone there's nobody there and she begins to go on this weird rampant of psychosis and just starts to scream and 
throw stuff and punch the walls and she's on her knees and just begins to like blood begins to drop out of her her eyes like like some kind of liquid going throwing all over her body which I'll probably put up the the freaking photo here and I thought that's one of the most shocking scenes I've ever seen in horror and of course the ending we let her find out that this creature has become a double ganger of Sam Neill's character. It's literally him to the end. It's just a weird movie that I seriously recommend y'all to watch it. If you have not watched it, take the time to watch it maybe two, three times to understand the story because it took me like three spins to watch the movie to understand it more. But I seriously recommend y'all to watch it. And that does it for my, for my top 10 underrated horror movies. I hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. And um, I'll, like I said, uh, there's a lot of more videos, more ideas I want to bring you all. Like I said, I'll probably do like a top 10 found footage movies. Or if I'll probably do like maybe my top 10 m- m- not most like or worst horror movies of all time. I don't know. There's a lot of ideas that I'm trying to do. I'm going to bring you some more, some metal content as well. Of course, maybe in the big metal head if you all saw, seen my Metal City Collection, and just a lot of fun stuff. So stay tuned for the ride, but until next time, stay metal.